Well, what do you want to talk about? Mushrooms or issue two? <laughs> Either or both, I think. Yeah, both yeah, yeah. together. <laughs> okay, both together. All right. You're going to put me to the challenge. I'll take it. Uh, it's Saturday morning, October 24th, and we've just finished talking to a number of farmers at the North Union Farmers Market in Shaker Square, and we've been talking to farmers about the possible uh, dangers of a constitutional amendment uh, that is uh, being called Issue 2 that would uh, set up a board um, appointed by the governor, not elected officials, to um, determine how livestock should be treated in this state. I'm going to vote against Issue 2 because I don't believe that it should be as part of the Ohio Constitution. I believe what the, the issue is about is fair and right for consumers and for farmers and if it were out of the Constitution and just regulated within the state by the board, possibly the board appointed by the governor, that that would be a lot better for the small farmers. In my opinion, uh, issue two represents is uh, large animal agriculture trying to get something passed to protect themselves from more stringent um, legislation. I'm opposed to issue two because I think putting a constitutional amendment, a permanent constitutional amendment on the state of Ohio with publicly appointed uh, people deciding what, how to grow our food, our animals, and how to feed them and how to treat them is um, dangerous. I think it's because it would make a amendment to our state of Ohio's constitution which would allow public uh, appointees by the governor, 13, to decide how we raise our animals. And I think we should have a free market. We don't want big business running our farms, so we don't want to vote yes for it. And you can guarantee that uh, the people put on the board will be bought and paid for by the Cargills and uh, Monsanto's of the world who are taking over the world. The way it's constituted, uh, 10 of the 13 members are going to be appointed by the governor, by one guy, which concerns me because the governor is very prone to political uh, influence and, and I think the Farm Bureau knows that whether that governor is um, a Democrat or a Republican, they wield incredible influence with the governor because they can say, you don't get any farm votes if we say you don't. And so the governor's got to do what the Farm Bureau says they got to do. <laughs> what, what recourse uh, would consumers or, or small farmers have uh, in this process if it passed? Um, what? Is this board going to be completely insulated? Ah. Uh, sort of public scrutiny? <laughs> well, uh, I, I don't see that there's any recourse, frankly. Uh, I mean, Jesus, you know, you get the Cong state. Congress to pass legislation that's going to be unconstitutional because the board's constitutional. Um, that's a constitutional amendment. Uh, you're going to have to change the constitution again uh, to change the board. Uh, that's the way it works. That's that's the highest level. So um, you know, I. You know, the thing that's scary about this bill is that it's misleading. You would think that if you were to say yes, yes. you were voting for. You know, family the, the farms, family farms, yeah. local, local food. foods. Right. So I don't know how they got this, this, this through. Also, that they're saying yes when in fact it should be no. Vote no on issue two.